The story of the four little Arahat novices. In a previous story, we learned how Pandita, a seven-year-old boy, ordained as a novice and attained Arahatship after turning back to his meditation hut on his way to his first arms round. He was not the only seven-year-old who attained this high distinction, as we will see in the present story. The story goes that the wife of a certain Brahmin prepared food for four specially designated monks and said to her husband, Go to the monastery, have the steward pick out four old Brahmins and bring them here. The husband went to the monastery and said, Have four Brahmins picked out and give them to me. There fell to him four seven-year-old novices who had attained arahatship. Sankicha, Pandita, Sopaka and Rewata. Now the Brahmin's wife had costly seats prepared and stood waiting, but when she saw the novices approaching, she was filled with rage. She said to her husband, You have gone to the monastery and brought back with you four youngsters not old enough to be your grandsons. She refused to let them sit on the seats which she had prepared, but spreading some low seats said to them, Sit here. Then she said to her husband, Brahmin, go and look for some old Brahmins and bring them here. The Brahmin went to the monastery and seeing the elder Sariputta said to him, Come, let us go to our house, and took him back with him. Now the elder Sariputta was the preceptor of these boys and knew of their attainment. When he reached the house and saw the novices, he asked, Have these Brahmins received food? No, they have received no food. Knowing that the food had been prepared for just four persons, he simply said, Bring me my bowl, and taking his bowl, he departed. The Brahmin's wife asked, What did he say? Her husband replied, These Brahmins sitting here ought to receive food. Bring me my bowl. So saying, he took his bowl and departed. Said the Brahmin's wife, It must be that he did not wish to eat. Go quickly and look out for another Brahmin and bring him here. The Brahmin went to the monastery and seeing the elder Moggallana the Great said the same thing to him and brought him back home. When the elder Moggallana saw the novices he said the same thing as, as the elder Sariputta and taking his bowl departed. Then said the Brahmin's wife to her husband These elders do not wish to eat. Go to the Brahmin's enclosure and bring back with you a single old Brahmin. Now the novices, although they were arhats, still had bodies with physical needs. They had had nothing to eat from early morning and sat there famished with hunger. By the power of their merit, high in the heaven of the thirty-three, Sukha, the king of the god's seat, showed signs of heat. Considering within himself what might be the cause, he perceived that the novices had sat there from early morning and that their bodies were now weak and exhausted. It's my duty to go there, thought Sukha, and seeing the situation and disguising himself as an old Brahmin, worn out by old age, he went to the Brahmin's enclosure and sat down in the most conspicuous seat of the Brahmins. When the husband on the lookout for an old Brahmin saw him, he thought to himself, now, my wife will be delighted, and saying, Come, let us go home, he took him and went back home. When the Brahmin's wife saw him, her heart was filled with delight. She took rugs and mats which were spread over two seats and spread them over one and said to him, Noble sir, sit here. When Saka entered the house, he respectfully saluted the four novices, and finding a place for himself at the edge of the seats where the novices were sitting, sat down cross-legged on the ground. When the Brahmin's wife saw him sitting there, in a lower position than the novices, she thought that he must be senile, and said to her husband, For sure you have brought a Brahmin, but you have brought back with you one old enough to be your father. He's going about saluting novices young enough to be his grandsons. What use have we for him? Put him out. The Brahmin seized him first by the shoulder, 
then by the arm, and finally by the waist, and tried his best to drag him out, but he refused to stir from where he sat. Then the Brahmin's wife said to her husband, Come, Brahmin, you take hold of one arm, and I will take hold of the other. So the Brahmin and his wife both took hold of his two arms, and dragged him through the door out of the house. Nevertheless, the dragging was an illusion, and Saka remained sitting in the same place in which he had sat before. When the Brahmin and his wife returned and saw him sitting in the very same place in which he had sat before, they screamed screams of terror. At that moment, Saka made his identity known. Then the Brahmin and his wife, overcome with awe and regretting their actions, gave food to their guests. When those five persons had received and finished their food, they departed. One of the novices broke through the circular peak of the house. The second broke through the front of the roof. The third through the back part of the roof. The fourth plunged into the earth while Saka departed from the house by another route, returning to his heavenly abode. Thus did those five persons depart from the house, from five different routes. From that time on, so it is said, that house was known as the house with five openings. When the novices returned to the monastery, a group of monks asked them, Friends, what was it like? With equanimity, the novices replied, the Brahmin's wife fumed with rage the moment she saw us. She refused to allow us to sit on the seats which she had prepared and said to her husband, Make haste and bring an old Brahmin. Our preceptor, the elder Sariputta, came. Then the Brahmin brought the elder Mogalana. The Brahmin's wife assumed they did not wish to eat. The Brahmin brought back Saka, who came in the disguise of a Brahmin. When Saka arrived, the Brahmin and his wife finally gave us food. But were you not angry with them for what they did? asked the monks. No, we were not angry, replied the novices. Now these particular monks had not yet attained and were unaware of the novices' high spiritual distinction. When they heard their reply, they reported the matter to the teacher, saying, Reverend sirs, when these monks say we were not angry, they say what is not true, they utter a falsehood. So the teacher explained that these young boys were in fact arahats. So the teacher, monks, those who rid themselves of evil passions oppose not those by whom they are opposed. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. He who is friendly amongst the hostile, who is peaceful amongst the violent, detached amidst those who are attached, that one I call a Brahmin. Thank you.